Hi Blender community, what is the thing that all 90s kids are missing today? Well, the 90s school days, isn't it? I really want to relive my childhood school memories once again and experience my old school time classroom again. And yes, I did this. This is my 90s childhood school. It took me a month of hard work to create this in a free 3D software called Blender. I really wanted to do this for years. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to remake your own classroom just from your memories. I know, I know, very nostalgic. And after that, we can enjoy any dream place in 3D virtual reality using Google Cardboard. As if you were standing there. You just need a PC and Blender, which is free. I have a very basic specs PC. It has only 4 gigs of RAM and 750 Ti GPU. So let's get dive in. First, we need some good references. I want to achieve an old 90s Indian government school look. Also, we need lots of photorealistic high resolution texture. Why? Because 80% of the scene realism is coming only from texturing. Voila! So we'll keep the modeling very simple. For example, by making the students table, we will just use a different size cubes to create all part of the table. We will make only one table and create a copy of it. Make some adjustment to this copy to make one more variation of another table. This way we can create four to five variation of tables that don't look same or repetitive. The entire classroom is nothing, it's just a simple box. After deleting the top, we need to create some edge loops on walls for pillars, doors and windows with your extra extra creativity. Just copy the reference. Now I really want to make that old Indian style Almira that every government school class had. But I did not get good references for it. Then I went to an antique furniture selling website where we can find good high resolution photograph of old Almira. And using the secret Eon Hubert technique we can import these images as plain and give some edge loops where needed. Wait, wait, if you want to move the vertex, it will distort the texture. So the trick is, you can enable correct face attribute here. Then you can freely move vertices without moving the texture with it. Give some thickness to the entire Almira and unwrap the side part. And that's it. Alright, doors and windows. I searched so many texture but our Indian doors and windows looks bit different. I finally got a nice looking texture but the window and door have a different color. So here is another great trick. I'm using Photoshop match photo feature to match exactly the color and the hue of window to the door. And look at the magic. Now both look like it's belong to the same room. Alright, moving forward, Assets Browser. Luckily, now Blender has a new way to import things in Blender. You just need to mark your assets and save them in a folder and locate this folder into the preferences. Then simply you can drag and drop your assets into your scene. After placing the main object, we can have a better understanding of where our scene is going on. For texturing these all 20 tables, I want every table should have a bit different and a unique texture, which is difficult to do one by one, but we can accomplish this with one cool trick. We can create a wide texture by placing 4 to 5 wood textures side by side in Photoshop. By using the same match photo feature, we can match the color of the texture to each other. Apply this texture to all tables. 
just simply unwrap tables roughly with the smart UV project. As we can see, while moving the texture along x-axis, we'll shift the texture on every object and replace the texture with the new one. We can use a random value per object to move the texture randomly for every table. We can also multiply this random value to shift this even more. Now look at this, the texture is randomly shifted on every table. So this way, every table has a different texture to each other. Pretty cool. To create edge wear effect, I'm using distance between bevel node and geometry normal data. This gives a white edge. By using the noise texture, we can make variation in the thickness of the edge. So after all this effort, every table looks a bit different and naturally used and aged. For wall, I am mixing two textures, but the problem is, no matter how you scale a big texture, you can always see a repetitive pattern of PBR tiling. To avoid this, I am using a free basher node by Arendel. Link is in the description. It will tile your texture randomly without repetitive tiling. And finally, we can use a noise pattern to mix two different textures. We usually see a different color on the bottom side of the walls in classrooms. So to make this, I'm creating a different long overlay texture in Photoshop. Saving this as PNG format and applying this as a new material over wall material with mix shader node. I'm using image alpha as factor and set this image to clip rather than repeat. And there we go. After setting this up for all walls, the scene is taking shape and started to look like my old school. And we can see the cycle GPU rendering, it taking 3 gigs of RAM out of 4 gig. So it's time to quickly fill the scene with small things like these posters and drawings. I have downloaded some papers and drawings and imported them all at once in Blender with some offset to each other. Then mark them as assets. We can simply drag and drop them into my scene to arrange however we want. Few more things like Indian switches that often found in these government school an old Indian style ceiling fan that we made with just basic modeling, some student notebooks on teacher table, chalk and duster for more schooly mood, and with the fun geometry node setup, we can decrease and increase the count. It will be a nice setup for any other day tutorial. So finally we are done. After all this effort, this is our finished classroom. And we can proceed to rendering now. The only source of light in my scene is the sunlight with a bit yellow color tint and a bright white color of environment and I'm not using any HDRI. For the rendering, there are two different ways in which you can render your scene. One of them is that you can render an animation with a simple moving camera so you can create a video out of it. Another is you can render a 360 image. By this way, you can have a full immersive view of 360 degree of your scene. You can literally stand in your classroom and enjoy your creation. To do this, just place your camera in the middle of the scene. In the camera setting, set your camera lens to panoramic and type to equirectangular. That's it. Hit render. The entire making process that I have shown you was not a step-by-step -step tutorial. Rather, it was a workflow guide or just an inspiration for any other beginner artist. And that's all in this video. We'll meet again. Bye-bye.